Good morning, my dear friends. Today, I want to discuss a simple method for the estimation of soil parameters in inaccessible, difficult, hilly terrain. As you know, all of you, that I am belonging from northeastern region where more than 70 percent is hill and the rest 30 percent in the plain. Except a portion of Assam, rest all are hills. In Meghalaya, more than 80 percent is hill and Manipur except a small well, area of Impal city, rest all are hill. Mizoram, all are hills and Arunachal, entirely it is Hilly in, is inaccessible, where road infrastructure is very poor. Likewise, Gangtok also, Sikkim, uh, Sikkim, entirely it is hillock. Road communication is so poor that after visiting there, where there, you can able to return or not, it is not at all sure, especially in monsoon period. Bhutan also, Bhutan is very close to our Assam. In Bhutan also, it is hillock. Road communication is very poor and it is thick jungle. So, we are all aware that during our construction of any foundation, we need some basic soil parameters. It is needless to emphasize the role of soil parameters, that is geotechnical engineering, properties of underlying soil and rock, especially in the foundation design. More especially for safety and cost efficiency. Cost economy includes time, smooth execution, quality workmanship, and overall safety of natural nature, including environment. That means I am going to say that the slope stability should be should be should not be disturbed at all, and we have to we have to go for estimation of soil parameters for foundation design. In normal practice, in case of planes. Geotechnical investigation includes boring or drilling, fill test, laboratory test, study of local history, local geology, local geomorphology, and the existing geography. In the case of safety analysis of structure in hilly terrain, it is very difficult. Because in case you require to require to boring and drilling, we need drilling equipment or boring equipment, field test equipments then only we can get 
soil sample and other field test results. So, it is very, very difficult to shipment of the machineries like that of planes. What happened in planes? We are loaded in a truck and we carry them. That will be unloaded at site. From next day onward, we can start drilling. In the hilly terrain, where there is uh, maybe maybe more than fifty percent of journey that shall be carrying manually, which is not at all feasible. And one gentleman in this regard asked me how the construction, if necessary, going on, how the construction material they shall be carried. Normally, I saw personally in hilly terrain, they carry all the materials using locally, manually, and where some places, pony, that is little horse, horse is used for transportation. A horse can carry, say, about two bags of cement at one time. So, so, so difficult. At the hilly terrain, and in especially in in accessible areas, mobilization of boring boring or drilling equipments, field test equipments, sample sampling test equipments, and not. Alternatively, it is not permissible to construct a approach road, mainly due to high cost involvement. And it will be further, it will be time will be much consuming time. In addition to that, there is a ban all over the India for cutting of hills and cutting up trees. Falling down trees is criminal offense. So it is very difficult to make roads to carry the materials. Number one, it is very huge cost involvement is there. Number two, it is a criminal offense of cutting down trees and cutting down hill slopes. We, we perhaps we noticed in Uttarakhand, in Himachal Pradesh, all these states of our India, which are close to Himalayan terrain, foothills to Himalaya, only because heavy landslide during summer season is noticed. Even people are stuck up there. They cannot move anywhere. Some visitors, some pilgrims are there. They are still stuck up and rescue operation is going on. Only because of cutting of hills and falling down of trees. So we should not encourage cutting of trees and cutting of hills in the name of our development works. Yes, we need construction at hill, hill slope also, at hilly place also, but we cannot go ahead of all those things. These are the hill shifts. These are the hill shifts. The top, where the, these are the location of the foundation, the 
here foundation side there, here foundation side there. You see, this is very steep slope. It is, this snaps are taken from the Bhutan, where uh, royal government has planned to construct transmission, electrical transmission line, and electrical transmission line almost, almost on hilly, since it is made of hill state, hill kingdom, Bhutan is hill kingdom. So they have, except Bhutil, these are all hills. On the other hand, aerial dropping or air lifting is not at all feasible. Not only cost proposition, but also uh, there will be some plain grounds will be necessary at the hilltop where the uh, material machinery shall be dropped. So it is completely ruled out. Considering all these critical problems, a study project was conducted for the Royal Government of Bhutan. The project was sponsored by Shama Power India Limited to find out simple approach for fulfillment of our design soil parameters such as SBC, settlement, elastic modulus, density, Poisson ratio, slope stability. These parameters we are only essential. So we have taken up this study project, and we are we are selected two locations near the foothill, about two hundred meter above mean sea level location number 80 and location number 86 in Bhutan. There we conducted a detailed soil investigation in these two locations. And the investigation was conducted up to a depth of 2B plus DF, depth of foundation, and B is a diameter. We are assuming, we are assuming three meter of three meter as width of the foundation and depth of foundation, we are con assume as three meter below existing ground level. So what happened? We did up to depth of 10 meters. And some places, it 12 meters, or some places, it is less than 12 meters when uh, rock was encountered. At the same time, we have conducted few plate load tests at the proposed foundation depth and above also, which, which also we conducted electrical resistivity test to ascertain the homogeneity of the soil. And in electric resistivity test indicates that the density of the soil is increasing proportionately with depth. So, void ratio is decreasing inversely proportional to depth. It is established from the electric resistivity test. And dynamic plate load test we conducted as per ASTM, and we find out, we compare the total test results, both 
general practice as per IS 1892, as IS uh, 2131, IS 2132, IS 2720, IS 6403, IS 8009, IS 1904, taking consideration of due consideration of all IS provisions, we have worked few boards and few dynamic titles at various this level, starting from 1.5 meter, 2 meter, 2.5 meter, and 3 meter. And we also ascertain that the void ratio is inversely proportional to depth and density is, relative density is directly proportional to depth. That is increasing, of, increasing with depth. These are, you see, it is at one meter we are conducting the test. Here it is, we are conducting the test uh, below the original soil. After a careful observation, the following average soil parameters were selected for comparative study. Corrected and below, 44, that is after due correction of Overburden pressure, dilatancy. Dilatancy correction is not required since we are not getting water table. Water table is not struck, even up to 15 meter. Uh, how it is possible? It is 200, 200 meter above mean sea level. So water cannot be there. Dry density, 1.735 ton per meter cubic meter, cohesion is zero, frictional angle 34, angle of repose 30 degree, void ratio is 0.55, compressibility coefficient 0, 0, 0.002 meter square per ton, volume compressibility is 0.013 meter square per ton, compression index 0 0.083, pore pressure coefficient is 0 0.2, drainage factor is 1, water level correction is 1. Since no water is required there, there shall be no water table correction, so we are adopting a value of 1. Relative density, 88%. Permissible settlement for this type of structure as per IS 1904 is 50 mm. And safety factor, uh, we are adopt adopting three. And permissible tilt is one by 40. The parameter stated above are estimated from the field and laboratory test results assume a significant depth of 1.5 B from the depth of found, below depth of foundation located at 3 meter. On the other hand, the DPLT test results, dynamic cone penetration test results, dry weight is 10 kg, drive height one, one meter, deflection one millimeter, there it is, millimeter, and plate size, 30 centimeter, dynamic resilience, 55.15 Newton per millimeter square. Dynamic resilience is 
load resilience is load absorbing capacity that much of load can absorb by the soil formation it is dynamic resilience so we can increase in dynamic loading condition sbc we can increase up to 50% 50% there is a provision for some foundation there will be 30% some foundation is 25% in considering the influence zone that is seismic zoning uh, since bhutan is seismic zone 5 so we are we are admissible up to increase up to 50 percent of SBC during earthquake. So maximum load absorption capacity is 55 Newton per millimeter square. These are, you see, these are, it is from the almost foundation depth because the slope was, the soil slope was like this. Original soil slope was like this like this and here it is it is 3 meter here it is almost 2.5 meter we have conducted dynamic test results repeatedly several test results at various depth here it is 3 meter there are some isolated boulders are also found there for which uh, we can specifically classified the formation as DFR. DFR is disintegrated disintegrated rock mass, precise rock mass. DFR, disintegrated precise rock mass. That means in our normal classification in Considering IS 1498, this type of soil, GC, we can classify as GC also. After a detailed analysis of net SBC, of net SBC, that is safe soil pressure at the foundation depth as per relevant required code. Quotes 6403809, as SBC calculation for cellular foundation, 8009 is settlement analysis, 1904 is safety analysis of foundation. So we have calculated 36.02 ton per meter square against an anticipated settlement of 15.52. You see, we, I say that it is anticipated settlement. I am, no one is 100% sure that the, what shall be the actual settlement. Because till now, our Researcher, they are saying that the about ab about little about twenty percent or twenty five percent settlement started during construction period, and maximum settlement so far reported to be thirty five percent the maximum because soil has isotropic balancing system in and since it has a tendency of releasing a pressure, so there is an elastic settlement also. So, and during loading, the void shall be decreasing due to the arrangement of particles automatically, small voids which are occupied by air that will be filled with compressed soil. So voids will be decreasing 
our consolidation system is entirely relating with the void ratio only. So, so it is our calculated, we, we have estimated maximum anticipated settlement. As per theory, this is maximum anticipated settlement with different type of corrections is there for shape factor, depth factor, pore pressure coefficient factor. There are a lot of factors, uh, depth versus uh, weak foundation. Considering all this correction factor, the anticipated, we are anticipating, that is, we have estimated the maximum. So the actual settlement may be much less than this. And the SBC, we have calculated against uh, from dynamic plate load test results as per ASTM E28351. And the settlement we have estimated there as 13.30 millimeter. So here it is little high, 15.52. Here it is little less. And the SBC is coming out 39.39. In this analysis, here we adopted a safety factor of three against shear failure. And here we adopt a safety factor of six against shear failure. Since it is derived from kinetic theory for falling bodies, this 39 is considered estimated adopting kinetic theory of falling body. Now see, as we see from our normal practice, it is 36 ton per square meter settlement, again settlement is 15.52 millimeter. And Dynamic plate load test, SBC 39.39, settlement is 13.30 millimeter. The estimated difference of SBC is 9.35%. 9.35% is nothing. Since we are considering a safety factor of Three, that means safety factor, nowadays it is considered, all codes, all over the India codes suggested that it shall not be less than 2.5. But in earlier ages, in 1925 and up to 1950, uh, uh, people, adopt elastic limit, safety factor against elastic limit, plastic limit, failure limit. Elastic limit, they are adopting 1.5. Tolerable limit, they are adopting 2. And failure limit is, is 3. But nowadays, all codes suggested that it shall not be less than 2.5. Not, not recommended that it should be more than 2.5. It shall not be less than 2.5. So we are considering three. Since lot of safety is there, we have, and uh, our minimum SBC for design is required 25 ton per uh, meter square. So when 25 ton per meter square, our 36 ton is quite good. It's quite good. 
So, nine, if we neglect 9%, there will be, we do not lose anything. 9% is admissible. Everywhere there, is a, there shall be a difference. So, uh, I personally, I feel there is no problem to go for if we reduce 10 percent, that is instead of 39, if we go for 10 percent, what will be, that is 30, uh, 35. So 35, we can easily adopt 35, but our requirement is 25 ton only. So, because you see, we, we cannot reduce these also, because our size is dependent on some other factors, such as uplift, horizontal thrust, since the, our height of the tower foundation, transmission tower foundation is sufficient, well, sufficiently tall. It is somewhere it is 60 meters, somewhere it is 100 meters, somewhere it is 80 meters, like that. So, uh, we cannot reduce the foundation size also. These are correlated with a lot of other loading systems. And the, the, the difference of the settlement of both methods has been worked out as 14.3% only. It is, it is very negligible. And our IS 1904 has recommended our permissible settlement as 50 millimeter. So instead of 50 millimeter, we are getting only 15.52. So there is no problem at all. There shall not be any problem to adopt this. this this uh, 39 or 36, there is no problem at all. We are, we are considering it is 13.4. Let us consider it's, uh, let us consider 100% extra. Then also it is 26.6, which is even less than 50 mm. So in all respect, this method is suitable. The, the PLT method is suitable and efficient for our design purpose. These have lot of other benefits. This test has lot of other benefits. We have discussed, we have pre presented our different presentation to our esteemed client and discussed regularly for a few days with lot of experts. And finally, Bhutan government was very happy to accept this simple approach for adopting in actual execution. After getting approval, this the Royal Government of Bhutan successfully completed three major power transmission lines which are now smoothly functioning. This study was conducted during 2016 and all the projects were completed and line has been commissioned. Power transmission is going on very smoothly without a single problem. There are multiple benefits. Using this method, less time requirement is less time consuming. This is very less time consuming. After making the pit, one gentleman can complete one test within one hour. At worst case, I am saying it is one hour. Actual test, how much? 15 minutes. Actual test is 15 minutes. 
but calculation and other factors, say one hour. No disturbing distress shall not create any disturbance of the hill slopes or formation or other thing. How much area we require to make the foundation trans? It's three meter by three meter only. Without disturbing the hill slope, we can make uh, one pit for construction. In that pit itself, we can conduct the test. During education period itself, the test can be done. More than 90% accuracy in prediction, we can predict settlement, density, barge index, elastic modulus, porosity, everything we can calculate from this test. I am not covering how to calculate the maximum density from this uh, method here since I am concentrating in foundation design only. And uh, during construction itself, this test could be conducted. You see, less money, less time, no natural disturbance, and during construction itself, the test could be conducted. Say, in case of some confirmation we need, after making trans, sometime we need some confirmation, additional confirmation at the time of confirmation, we can go for that test. In many places I have conducted. One, Mittunjai Mandir, there I have conducted during the construction period itself, in uh, two, uh, two plus seven story uh, building at Nogao. Nogao is a very, uh, very not good soil. It is not good soil. It is reconditioned soil using some bamboo piles and over that, uh, over that we provided a one meter thick granular cushion. Then we rolled it and we conducted where we are getting 28 ton, 30 ton SBC like that with a negligible amount of settlement. So it is very simple, it is very easy. In my opinion, the test is more suitable for small and medium structures, say up to 10 story building, up to 12 story building, medium structure, it can easily be conducted and it can be used also confirmation at the time of execution itself. Because you see, collection of undescribed samples and go for laboratory testing in such cases, our project cost will be increasing. Time is the time is accelerating the cost. So we cannot afford so much of time. When we need some type of confirmation, we can use easily, and within half an hour, we can confirm that this soil is good. I had. Uh, I had successfully completed many major projects in Bhutan, Northeast India, and all the projects are now successful. So, in my opinion, I, I suggest everyone, say, if there is, so in many cases I observed during construction itself some, uh, so all over there, although soil is isotopic, elastic, semi-infinite, uh, but in some cases, so, so what happened? A big size of area, say, say it is a, uh, it is a 2,000 square meter building, 
5,000 square meter building. All the foundation trances may not be consist of same foundation salt. If there are some some doubt if arises, then we need to confirm it. In such cases, this dynamic plate load test it is very what functioning, very what functioning in transmission line also in Bangaygao, Lakhimpur, Bangaygao, Gugamuk sector from Lower Subansri project. It is 400 kb. Uh, double circuit line in there in many foundations where difficult situation arises i have conducted this test also in uh, tipura also during construction the, there are some critical so problem was arises there i have conducted this type of test it is it is a very simple and less time consuming Assume be accurate and it is very purposeful to take the actual problems of site. The, the basic information all related, related to the study are furnished in volume 81 and 81B of November 2016. So if somebody wants, they may come to our research sector to verify these results and they may, they may learn lot of things about this test method. This simple approach is very much cost efficient and in respect, all respect, reliable and suitable. Earlier I had pre presented an international, uh, presented one technical paper in an international journal after having more, after conducting more and more works and having more information of many more projects, necessary addition and alteration has been made in this publication. Thanking you, please have a Nice day. May God bless you all. Be happy. Be healthy. Be worthy. And my best wishes to all of you for long contented life. I am always available at JC Gogui at gmail.com. My mail ID, again I am saying, jcgogoy at gmail.com. Please have a nice day.